If you're running your application on the production environment, you probably want to be notified whenever the application is down, whenever it's not responding correctly, or whenever it has lost its access to the database or any external service. Having that notification in place, you can quickly react, check what's the issue, and hopefully provide a fix in time. In this video, we'll see how to set up such a notification using health checks and also application insights. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe to stay up with the latest new materials. Before we jump into the code, let's talk what health check is in general. Well, a health check is nothing but a mechanism that allows you to monitor and check the health of the application by returning the appropriate status. So let's say that our web API application has a health check enabled and it is available at the underscore health endpoint. And if you wanted to actually ping that endpoint by the get request, you'll get the response, for example, 200 OK. And this would mean that our application has correctly verified all of the dependencies that it contains. And for example, it is able to actually connect to the database to some external services, and it is basically up and running correctly. And this kind of checks, you can basically do in time intervals, for example, every 5, 10 or 15 minutes. And whenever the application is unhealthy, meaning that something is down, for example, the connection to the database, then the health check endpoint would return 503 error status code. And based on this response, so error response, you could set up an alert that would notify you immediately after this status code has been returned from your health check. So how do we actually configure such a health check endpoint into our web application? For a short demonstration, I have prepared a blank web API application with only connection to the database using Entity Framework Core. So if you run this application at this stage, of course, there will be no health check endpoint at all. So first of all, what you have to do in order to add health checks to this application is to install a package that will allow us to define our custom health checks and the default built-in one. So let me just open the NuGet manager and in the browse section, I will just type in microsoft.extensions.diagnostics.healthchecks and this is the extension that we want to install to our application. So I'll just click install and accept the license terms. So having that installed, let's go back to the program class and in here, First of all, we'll start by adding some services to our web application builder. So I'll just say builder.services.addHealthChecks, just like this. And this will add some needed dependencies to our dependency injection container. So having this defined, now we can go ahead to the application middleware section. And we should be able to actually invoke the app.map.healthChecks middleware, which accepts the pattern which is basically the name of the endpoint with the health check. So let me just type in health like this. And at this stage, we are able to actually run our application and verify whether the health check is working or not. So I'll just click Ctrl F5 to run it without the debugger. And with a simple HTTP client inside my Visual Studio, I'll just send the get request to the health endpoint. And as you can see, in the response, we got 200 OK. And in the response body, we got just simply plain text saying that the application is healthy. So this basic health check currently is only checking that our application is returning any kind of response. But if we wanted to actually check whether the connection to the database is set up correctly and our application can connect to it, we'll have to add some more configuration, for example, by adding our custom health check to the application. So in order to do that, let me actually create a new class inside our Web API project. Let's call it database health check like this. And to hook it up correctly, it has to implement the interface i healthcheck. And for this interface, we have to implement one method, which is healthcheck async. And as this is an asynchronous method, we'll be able to actually use the async and await keywords. So as am I using the entity framework core to connect to the database, we can actually go ahead and use the dependency injection to inject the DB context to this class through the constructor. So I will just say that I want to get the application DB context and let's assign the field and assign the reference to it. And now let's say that under some variable can connect, we actually want to check whether through this application DB context on the database instance, if we invoke the can connect async method, whether this returns true or not. And this will of course mean that we are able to connect to the database through our web application. So I'll just return the correct response depending on the can connect boolean property. So if it's true, then we want to of course return the information 
that the result is healthy and we can use the static method healthy and pass some optional parameters if we wanted to. But if we cannot connect, then we want to return unhealthy status using the unhealthy method from the health check result class. And of course, in this way, you would be able to actually add any type of health checks, for example, checking your external dependencies just by invoking the appropriate methods for that given services. So having this defined, now let's go back again to the program class. And if you wanted to include this database health checks, we had to extend the add health checks invocation using the Fluent API with the add check method, which accepts a generic parameter with the type of our custom health checks. And as the first parameter to this method, we'll also have to add a name of this health check. So let's just call it database like this. So now having this application in such form, let me just run it once again and try to verify the connection to the database using our health check endpoint. So let's go back to the client and invoke the get request. And as you can see, again, we are getting 200 OK. And in the resource body, we are just getting the string healthy through the Visual Studio. Well, but how do we know from this response that the health check actually checked the database connection? We can do that by adjusting the map health checks middleware by adding a second parameter that will allow us to actually format the health check response in any way that we wanted to. So as you can see, this takes the parameter of health check options. So I'll just create a new object of that type. And the only thing that we have to actually overwrite is the response writer. So as you can see, this is nothing but a function that accepts two parameters, which are the HTTP context and the health report, and it returns a task. So this is an asynchronous method. So I'll just paste some sample implementation of this response writer. And as you can see, I'm just passing two parameters. First one is the HTTP context, and the second one is the report from the health check. And well, all I want to do is actually format the JSON response message and write it to the client of our web application. And in the response itself, you can see the overall status and also for each entry. So meaning that for each health check that we will define in the web application, we'll have a separate entry with its key, with its status, exception if there's any, and also the duration of that particular health check. So with this simple change, let me just run the web application once again. And this time, if we go to the client and invoke the health endpoint, you see that now we got the overall status as healthy. And also in the checks property, there's a list of each and every health checks that we will define to our web application. For now, we have only one, which is database, and currently this is healthy. All right, great. So we managed to add our custom health check to the application. But what if we wanted to actually add some more, for example, to Azure Service Bus or any different kind of message broker or any kind of different Azure resources? Well, of course, we could add our own custom health checks like this one, but we could also make use of one of the Nougat packages that already exist that have the health check implementation already in place. So let me actually once again open the Nougat Manager package. And if I wanted to actually look for such health check extensions, I would search for ASP.NET Core And in here, there's a list of many different health checks that we can add to our application and use them straight away. So you can see that there's already a hashtag for the SQL server. There is example for the Redis cache, RabbitMQ, and many other. So basically any type of popular service or cloud resources are listed here in those types of extensions. So maybe if just for example, I will install the SQL server extension and we will replace our custom database hashtags with this simple package. So I'll just install that to our application. Now, if I wanted to actually replace the database health check that we have defined, I could just remove this add check invocation and replace it with the add SQL server extension from this package that I have just installed. And this extension takes two parameters. First one is the connection string and the second one is the health query. So the health query is nothing but a way to check the connection to our database. So if we are able to actually invoke select one statement on the database, it means that we are able to connect to that database. The documentation of this at SQL server method can be found on the GitHub for a certain extension package. But let me now run the web application once again, and we'll check the health endpoint with this new implementation. As you can see, we have 
pretty much the same response. Now the name has changed because by default it is called SQL Server, but we could have overwritten this parameter as well. Right, great. So we have managed to actually add hashtags to our application. We know how to add our custom hashtags for any kinds of needs. And we know how to use the external packages to add hashtags to some popular services right away. So now maybe let's set up some alerts with the application insights resource on Azure Cloud to actually notify us whenever the health check is not returning the healthy status so that we are aware that their application might be not working as it's supposed to. First of all, I just deploy this web application through Visual Studio by clicking the publish button. And I have already installed the publish profile file that will deploy this web application to healthcheck-dev.azurewebsites.net. So by clicking the publish button, after a while, it will be available on the Azure Cloud. Once the application has been published, I'll just open a browser and invoke one of the get endpoints, which is the weather forecast. And as you can see, there's some sample data returned from this web application. So maybe let's try to invoke the health endpoint and ask what we might have expected. This application is running healthy with the overall status as healthy and also the database health check is also healthy. So now having this endpoint up and running, let me just copy the link to it and go to the Azure portal and to be more specific to the application insights resource that I have just created. And now using this resource, I just go to the availability tab and here we can add two types of tests by clicking one of the two buttons. So we can use the add standard test, which will allow us to actually define the URL, the test frequency, locations, and some additional settings. And you could also use the add classic test with its test name, URL, and some additional policies. So maybe in this example, let's just use the classic test. So let's call it a health check def like this. The URL, I'll just paste in the URL that I have copied. We can select the test frequency from five to 15 minutes. We can change the test locations, meaning that each location will test this endpoint separately. And we have to define at least five of them. We can also define the success criteria. For example, we can specify that the maximum timeout will be 30 seconds and the status code must be equal to 200 OK. And besides that, we can also specify that content must contain some kind of a response message. In the alert sections, we can just say that the alerts are enabled. So let's click create. And after a while, our health checks has been added to this application insights resource. So down here, you see that now this is marked as gray because it has not yet been invoked. But if we click refresh, after a while, this should turn green. And as you can see, each and every location has been marked here as success, meaning that our application is up and running correctly. All right, but what if the hash again point fails and we want to be actually notified about such situation? Well, we can just click on those three dots and then the open rules alerts page and in here, we have our first rule actually already defined, for which the condition is if there are two or more than two failed locations, this alert rule will be triggered. So let's go to the details of this rule and click on the edit button. And here we can specify which action will be invoked whenever the rule triggers. So I can just click ahead on the select action group. I can create a new one or use one of the existing ones. So by clicking the create action group button, we can just create a new one by first of all, defining its name. So let's just call it health check and also the display name. And in the notification section, we can set up the email notification or SMS notification or push or voice messages. So I'll just go ahead and select the email notification. I'll just type in my own email address and click OK. Let's just call it email notification. All right, so by clicking review plus create, we can go ahead and create such action group. And after a while, this is already added to our alert rule. So let me just make sure to click the save button. And right now, whenever the hash checks fails, we should get a notification to our defined email address through this alert rule. So maybe in order to actually simulate that the application is not running properly, I will just disable the public access network from the database. And now whenever the hash checks run and checks the database connection, it should not be able to connect to the database, meaning that the whole hash checks will be unhealthy. 
So now if we go back to our half check endpoint and try to refresh this, we should get an unhealthy response because our application is not able to connect to the SQL server because we have disabled the public access to it. So right now, whenever the health checks runs on the five minute interval, it should get a not okay response, which will automatically trigger the email notification. So let's just wait a couple of seconds. And whenever the health check runs again, we no longer get the okay response, but instead there's a failed response. And such response should trigger the email notification. And if I go ahead and check my mailbox, indeed there's a notification from Azure saying that the alert is activated for our health check. So we could go ahead and click on the view application availability and check what's going on with this application. So by adding just a few lines of code to our application and hooking up the application insights Azure resource, we managed to add a health check endpoint to our application and then to set up the notification and alert rule so that we are notified whenever the application is not working as is expected to.